night, fire heavily damages a three-decker in Worcester. Why firefighters say it could have been much worse. Plus, after years of construction, the new Belmont Street Bridge is almost complete. A look at the work being done. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Brittany Schaefer. We begin tonight in Worcester, where firefighters work to put out flames at a three-decker on Matson Avenue. The fire broke out around 2 o'clock Thursday afternoon. The road was closed for several hours as crews fought the fire. Worcester firefighters work to put out flames at a three-decker on Matson Ave. We uh, arrived to find heavy fire showing from the uh, second floor area and uh, our crews did a great job of knocking it down quickly. Chief John Sullivan says five people, including a pregnant woman, are now displaced. He says people were inside at the time of the fire, but luckily no one was injured. There were folks home at the time, and our fire investigative unit will be uh, doing the uh, interviews of all the occupants. Uh, we first got a report uh, that there are oxygen bottles on the first floor for the first floor ox uh, occupants, so uh, that's a little dangerous for us, but it doesn't look like the fire got anywhere near. Uh, though, so uh, we're all very happy about that. The apartment is right off of 190, and many people like Bonnie Clark could see the flames from the highway. I saw all these trucks, and I was like, oh my God, what's going on? But there's seven, I counted the trucks, it's like seven or eight trucks, which is insane. And I'm just amazed that I've never seen a fire this, this crazy before. Mark Ventura lives next door and says he was worried the flames were going to hit his home. Really surprised. See, it's so close. I'm nervous just just because you know the the spread, you know, and if wind's going the right way, to jump over to ours. Ventura and Clark had similar messages to the Worcester Fire Department after watching them fight the flames. The firemen are amazing. I mean, they just go up and you know they risk their lives every day for this stuff. It's just. Yeah, it's emotional. Thank God Worcester Fire came in, put a good stop to it. So thumbs up for Worcester Fire. <laughs> no word yet on what sparked the fire. A Worcester man is arrested Thursday after a series of break-ins on Salisbury Street. Worcester police say 57-year-old Stephen Shaw was arrested earlier today for breaking and entering into three homes. During the first attempt, a woman and her baby were home, and after he smashed the back window with a brick, she screamed and scared him off. But instead of running away, Shaw went down the street and tried again. The alarm call the officers responded to, and they actually spotted this male in the backyard there. Uh, there was another broken window there, so he was in the process of trying to break into a second house. And police responded, and he took off running. Uh, at that point, the police chased him. He briefly got away, but uh, they checked the area, and he was found hiding under a pine tree and a bunch of shrubs. So he was caught. And there was also a third person who, while at work, saw on his phone that the male was trying to break into his house. Shaw was arrested for breaking and entering into two homes and attempting to break into another. A Worcester man is arrested Thursday after police say he was found trespassing. Police were on scene of McGuire's Lounge on Saugus Place around 1 p.m. today. They say a man appeared to be intoxicated and was found in the employee-only area of the business. He had a store checkbook in his hand. It's unclear if the man works at the store, but police say he is now facing trespassing charges. Drivers who travel Belmont Street in Worcester often may know the difficulty of trying to get on to 290 West. But now with bridge construction almost complete, the ride will be much easier. Our Olivia Lemon has more. After nearly three years of construction, the Belmont Street Bridge is expected to be complete next month. We are 95% complete right now, and within the next three to four weeks, we will we'll be 99.9% .9 complete, essentially uh, uh, fully complete. Thursday, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito and Mass DOT officials toured the Worcester construction site. The project cost about $10 million and is expected to help with traffic flow. Mass DOT says the bridge now has a left turn only lane to 290 West, better sidewalks and more room for bicyclists. According to the analysis and, and we've already seen some improvement, yes, traffic conditions should improve significantly. They did a great job coordinating, uh, working hard to do this in a safe manner with the least amount of disruption to the people uh, who travel through this stretch uh, multiple times in the course of a day. The Belmont Street Bridge was built in the 1930s. Transportation Secretary Stephanie Pollack says the state needs to be making investments to last a century to better the communities who come after us. 
we're creating a reliable transportation system for massachusetts and we're modernizing our system so that the system that we leave for those who come after us is is in great shape. Pollock says since coming into office in 2015, about 80 bridges statewide have been rehabilitated or replaced. She says they will help provide reliable travel. We pave 2000 miles of roadway. That's enough roadway that if it went back and forth across the state as a single lane, we'd go back and forth five times. Meanwhile, with the Belmont Street Bridge almost complete, MassDOT says drivers can expect a smooth ride within the next few weeks. I think we've seen the worst of the roadway impacts, traffic impacts. Olivia Lemon, Worcester News Tonight. Now, Mass DOT says there will be some night work coming up within the next few weeks, causing minor road closures, but it will not affect traffic much. A two-vehicle accident on West Boylston Street in Worcester results in heavy damage to both cars. The accident happened in the area of 1078 West Boylston Street around 7.30 tonight. An ambulance was on scene. Both vehicles suffered substantial front-end damage. Debris was seen scattered across the street and sidewalks. No word on any injuries at this time. The strike is over, but nurses at Tufts Medical Center are still off the job. With no deal in sight, it started with a strike and now it's a lockout. With 1,200 nurses off the job at Tufts Medical Center in Boston, after the nurses union and hospital failed to negotiate a new contract. At this point, it doesn't look like they're any closer to a deal. Caroline Connolly has the latest from Boston. The doors were open, but the nurses locked out. Just the latest in the ongoing dispute between Tufts Medical Center and the Nurses Association. It's really sad for nurses to come to work and be told they can't go in. About 1,200 nurses who went on strike yesterday will be off the job until next week. In their place are temporary nurses who Tufts had to offer a five-day contract to to cover the one-day walkout by the union. We can't keep nurses here. We train them, they leave, they go other places, and they make a lot more money. And money is really at the heart of all of this, where nurses say their pay pales in comparison to other hospitals. So let's take a look at the numbers. At nearby Brigham and Women's Hospital, the top scale hourly rate, for example, for a nurse is $70. At Tufts, it's $63. But their contract offer was a raise to bring it up to $69 by year 2020. But you also have to consider these numbers. The revenue after expenses at Brigham is $93 million. At Tufts, they have just $8.2 million. We stand by that best and final offer. Today, hospital leaders said they have no plans to renegotiate an offer with the nurses. They want you! At least not until the lockout ends and they return to work. And they do plan to return to work again on Monday. That is when they'll be allowed back into the hospital. And the hospital says at that point, they'll likely try to schedule some time to negotiate again in the near future. In Boston, I'm Caroline Kopp for Worcester News Tonight. The battle over a bill to repeal and replace Obamacare goes one step further today with a new version of the GOP Senate health care bill. Erica Edwards reports. Senate Republicans today resuscitating their plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. The revised draft improves on the previous version in a number of ways. The Better Care Reconciliation Act would include an additional $70 billion in help for out-of-pocket costs, allow people to use health savings accounts to pay for premiums, and allocate $45 billion more dollars to fight the opioid epidemic. We believe it represents the beginning of the end of Obamacare. The revisions are intended to entice Republicans skeptical about the last plan, like Senators Ted Cruz and Mike Lee, who support the option of cheaper, catastrophic plans. Senators Rand Paul and Susan Collins have already rejected the new plan, dooming it if Republicans lose any other votes. Adding to the mix, fellow Republicans Lindsey Graham and Bill Cassidy have released a competing plan aimed at redirecting federal funding for health care to the states. Republicans have to pass it without any help from Democrats. From what we're seeing, the new Republican Trump care bill is every bit as mean as the old one. Now is the time. With an expected vote next week, the plan is drawing both prayer and protests at the Capitol. So stop cloaking your greed in religious language. Critics arguing the effort to end Obamacare is more about money than saving lives. Erica Edwards, 